saw a transfer of German populations even before the war broke out. The difficulty, of course, was that the German speakers were the second largest national grouping within Czechoslovakia. If you're going by ethnic representation, the country really should have been called Czechoslovakia. And even before the advent of Hitler, the Czech and German relationship had always been at the very least tense. So the Czechs and Bosch especially saw the war as the opportunity to solve a great many problems at the same time and to complete the Czechoslovak nation building project complicated or hampered by the inclusion of more than three million Germans or previously Austrians. These are people who've never been German citizens. But either way, German speakers who had little or no interest in being there. What about those liberal allied countries that had been victorious in the war and who are now in control of Europe? Did they simply go along with this? For the Allies, it solved a lot of problems as well leaving no national minorities for future Hitler to make trouble among and exploit was considered to be a very good thing after the war, not just in the case of Czechoslovakia, but also, of course, Poland, where the majority of ex-Billies came from, Hungary, ultimately, although the Allies never agreed to removals from their Yugoslavia and Romania as well. living within Slovakia, or the Slovak part of Czechoslovakia, had settled throughout the region as far back as the Middle Ages. Having so this is Radio Slovakia, broadcasting via WRMI on 7780. So this is an AM broadcast station on shortwave. Uh, so this is, of course, the test of the Gen DE 1103 versus Texan PL 680. Both perform really, really well. Both have uh, pretty good audio and pretty good reception. Once again, using the sloper antenna in the backyard. So it gives you an idea of the uh, performance between both receivers as uh, we're listening to this. So Radio Slovakia uh, via WRMI in Okeechobee, Florida on 7780 kHz at, uh, this is 030 UT, roughly 040 UT. Um today, August uh, 18, well, 19th UTC, technically. They were forced to leave. Nearly all of those were placed in camps before their removal. And these camps, were they set up for that purpose, or these leftover camps during the war? Yeah, some were. The camps actually appeared before anybody had made any coherent plans for the removal of the people who would be detained in them. The first camps popped up in April 1945, where local authorities simply went out and gathered together their German populations. That started in a suburb of Popbad in April 45, then in Petrzelka, which of course is a borough of Bratislava. So this sort of detaining of Germans was in many cases initiated not by the top down authorities, but just by local people who had their own reasons for doing so? Well, local authorities, this wasn't for the Slovak citizens turning on their German neighbors. In fact, the Slovak National Council complained loudly and repeatedly that too many Germans were being shielded by their Slovak neighbors. But these were to be district national forces or branches of national security, local militias. It happened at both levels, both local and national. But when local initiative prevailed, it was usually because some group of power brokers were going into the personal enrichment business. The expulsion process and the encampment process was also an expropriation process. The detainees lost their houses, their farms, their businesses, their personal assets, and when you drive them all into camps, then the 
person or groups of people that do that tend to be the ones that redistribute the proceeds. So it was a really kind of a looting frenzy in a sense. Very much so. And considerable disputes over who was going to get what.